so thank you ever so much for joining us and good afternoon everybody um for those of you that don't know me i'm cherry bennett and i'm the director of people and policy at the council and sitting next to me in our small screen together um is mandy bishop and she's our chief operating officer we haven't put our introductions in the chat so i'm sorry about that um uh, so I'll kind of introduce the session today and then I'm going to hand over to Becky Brooks in a second. Um, we've got a few short updates to talk through today, but we really want this session to be an opportunity for you to share information about what's happening in your communities and your places of, of work and discuss some of those challenges and explore those ideas together about what we can what we can achieve together. If you remember last year um, at the council, we held a series of regular meetings across the voluntary sector and with our partners to discuss the cost of living crisis. And that enabled us to do a number of things, which again, we're trying to kind of keep up with and, and follow up through this year as well. So we created a warm spaces directory and we allocated funding through our community contribution fund. We'll talk about both of those things in, in a moment. We developed some joint communications plans that with partners that we shared kind of widely across our communities. We introduced an online referral form through our community wellbeing hub for professionals to help speed up those referrals. And again, we'll touch a little bit more on the community wellbeing hub maybe in our in our conversations. And we were supporting food banks with iPads for their volunteers so that they could make those referrals to the community wellbeing hub, signpost people to information and, and generally just kind of help join those dots up for us, particularly with those families that we knew were were on the on the front line. Um, in March of this year, the Community Wellbeing Hub launched its outreach space in the atrium of the IUH. Again, hopefully you've seen information about that, but we will make sure we share a bit more of that with you in a second. Um, and we enabled voluntary sectors to partners, therefore, to be able to signpost patients and their carers to the support that's available. Um, these are just a few of the highlights of the work that's been going on kind of through the council, but particularly with, with you and with partners. And we know that many of you are here uh, continuing to support individuals and families in lots of different ways through various initiatives and local projects. We know the challenges remain. Last month, figures came out in a recent study that looked at food poverty in older people. That study was undertaken by the University of Bath and commissioned by the council back in August. Some of the highlights of that report are as follows. Um, a questionnaire was sent to Baines residents receiving pension credit, and this questionnaire showed that nearly half of all respondents, 46%, reported some degree of food insecurity over the past 12 months. So again, kind of that link back to the food banks and the work that's happening there, we know is really important. Around a third of participants, 34%, reported worrying about food running out before they could afford to buy more and indicated that it was often or sometimes true that they could not afford to eat balanced meals. One in 10 respondents told us that sometimes or often they didn't have enough they didn't have enough to eat in the past 12 months. And the most common source of support for respondents was friends and family. While most people had someone to help them if they really needed, if they really needed it, close to one quarter did not. 23% said they didn't have anyone locally that they could depend on, and one in 10 felt that they didn't know who would help them. You can read that study in full, and we'll put a link to that study in the chat. And we know that this challenge of the cost of living and particularly kind of issues around food remains really high this year. We know that while some things have changed, actually so many things haven't changed at all since last year. Um, and for, for some, you know, many members of our community, those challenges are, are just as much, if not, if not harder than they were before. Um, and we know that with the increase in demands for services and funding and staffing challenges that impact on, on you and on all of us, that 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 context and that climate within which we're working is increasingly tricky. Um, I'm going to hand over to now to, to Becky from 3SG, who will talk about what support is available through 3SG and also kind of what she's hearing from third sector partners. Thanks, Becky. Thank you, Terry. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Becky Brooks. I'm the director at 3SG. So we support charities, community groups and social enterprise across Baines. Um, in terms of what we're seeing, we know that things are really difficult for our third sector organisations and obviously demand has gone up. So demand has gone up and funding is going down. This seems to be the trends that, that we're seeing at the moment. And it's very, very difficult for organisations to find those core costs and to find those keep that sustainability going. Because even if you provide all these exciting projects and, and funders 
like exciting projects, obviously, it's very difficult to still keep the lights on and pay your staff and things like that. So I think there's some work for us to do in the new year about ways in which we can try and get that message across to funders to try and make process easier for funding um, and also to make sure that um, those core costs are covered. Um, We've just done our annual third sector survey, which we are analysing the results of. And um, actually, the results aren't too surprising this year. We're in a very similar trend to last year. Long term funding is, is still the key issue. Uh, things like long term funding, lack of volunteers. And again, all of these things that will come out, we're, we're still analysing that data, but it will help us to set our priorities for the year ahead. So it's really, really good work, very time consuming work, but very worthwhile. Um, and then in terms of cost of living, I'll pop a link into the chat about what we've been doing. Uh, last year, we put together a section on our website because, because of the history that 3SG has with local volunteers and pandemic response, we were concerned that people might be going to our website to look for help and support. So whilst we're still, we're not actually delivering that kind of support at the moment um, or anymore, we wanted to make sure that we were signposting to all the good work that everybody else is doing. So we've got um, a cost of living section on our website, which is also for organisations and for individuals. So there's a whole section for the charities and the organisations that we support. Um, and there are things on there such as grant funding that's available, pro bono support, toolkits, webinars, um, some free and discounted products, and also things like energy bill discount schemes, because we know that a lot of our organisations are in buildings that aren't necessarily very energy efficient. Um, in terms of support for individuals, we put together a directory of services, so <laughs> not another one everybody says, but actually it's really useful to have that in that place. And we've signposted to all the things that are, that are currently happening in the area. So if anyone on this call wants to have a look at it, if there's anything that you're doing that's missing from there, please send it to us. If there's anything out of date, please also let us know, because that's also a difficulty with these directories, keeping them up together. Um, so yeah, support for individuals, there's the directory. There's training and courses, so things like the Wellbeing College, not the Wellbeing College anymore, Wellbeing Courses, um, cost of living support, tools, guides and resources as well for, for residents. Um, we also have a monthly newsletter which we send out to our 2000 plus volunteers that registered in Bain. So we try and put cost of living support into all of those as well in case people reading those need some help or know somebody that, that does as well. Um, so I think that's probably it from us. Um, in terms of some of the things that we're working on, obviously the, the, the outcomes of the survey will put, help us put a plan together for 2024. There's lots of other projects that be going, going on, but in terms of cost of living and, and associated work, we've, um, we'll, we'll be putting together some workshops about ways in which we can help organisations. And also we've got a social prescribing project manager that will be joining us as of the spring next year, which is really exciting. Um, that'll be a one year post and we're going to start interviewing for that in January. So we're, we're, that'll be a really, really exciting addition to, to what we offer. So uh, I think that's probably it from me, but I'll pop the link for the cost of living resource into, into the chat and, um, and my email if anybody wants to, to get in touch. Thanks, Becky. Can I hand over to Mel to give us a bit of an update um, on the Warm Spaces directory and in, in the kind of broader context of our Live Well site at Baines as well? Thanks, Mel. Thanks, Cherry. Hi, everybody. So I'm Melanie Hodgson and my role is to lead the um, Live Well Baines team. I have other comms and engagements or duties as well across adults children and send special educational needs so um a quick update on the warm spaces directory if i'm just can quickly share my screen if that's all right that probably make it a little bit more meaningful um okay so bear with me a second hopefully you should be able to see this so um I won't go into what Live Well Baines is here. If anybody's not aware of it, then let me know and I can have a chat with you separately. Um, so we have a, a, at the top here so people can easily find it. We have cost of living support. So I know the purpose of the meeting isn't to go into huge detail about that, but we have links here to cost of living support, which has got absolutely, I mean, there's so much stuff. It's actually split into, you know, concertinas. Lots of stuff on benefits, water bills, um, energy costs, food. And with the food one, which is particularly pertinent, it's for all ages. So we've got um, 
you know, free school meals, healthy start, um, holiday activities and food programs, as well as information for a range of different ages, circumstances, debt advice, pension credit, childcare costs. And when you click on any of these, it opens up um, links to lots of different places, carers and so on. So that's lots of cost of living information. Um, a link to the Community Wellbeing Hub. Um, I think that just goes to their website. Let me see. Yes, so that, uh, that's there as well for anybody ringing who needs support over the phone. Money matters, financial support. Um, and what we wanted me to talk about today is the warm spaces. So um, there's 28 warm spaces. That's less than last year. So last year we had 50. Um, and what we did was when a decision was made to uh, resurrect, shall we say, the warm spaces directory, my team contacted all 50 and said, do you want to be part of this again this year? And um, I think at that point, 24 came back and said yes. So we contacted the other ones again and said, you know, do you want to be part of this? And they either said, no, we're, we, have an, we have an existing offer with a cafe or a stay and play or whatever it might be. And they're already on Live Well Baines about that. So it's an ongoing offer. Um, we have had a few added in uh, the last couple of weeks. So they're all listed here. So somebody can search if they specifically need um, car parking or an accessible entrance or disabled toilets, etc. They can filter via these. So if we just let's just pick one. So let's say Bath Ford village shop and cafe. If you click on that one, I live near Bath Ford, for example. I don't, but you know, this is a good one for me. It says a bit about it um, and opening times, the address and a new feature for this year, a map. So um, which is really handy. Uh, what's available? Also any charges. So um, quite a few places don't charge at all or they or they charge a nominal amount or a donation so most of the warm spaces are low cost free or donation and bus stops as well so people can use public transport and also this particular at Bathful Village Shop and Cafe they have all these facilities as well free wi-fi magazines toilets etc so it's all on there um so somebody an organization cafe group can register their warm space easily and quickly um there's a bit of blurb to explain the purpose of it and that private homes aren't eligible um there's also a sort of charter so that explains what we expect um from an, uh, somewhere when they are providing a warm space um a lot of it is about confidentiality and um equality and respect that sort of thing i won't go into all of that now um and it's really i won't again i won't go through it now because i know we've got quite a big agenda but register now that's really quick and easy and then the um cafe or group or club can that will, they will fill that in and they'll that will come through to my team who will moderate it and then it goes live straight away so we we, we do that in, you know straight away um and if they wish to modify something, perhaps their opening times have changed or they have um, now have play equipment for children, then they can modify, they can go into their own to do that any time they wish to. Um, 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 so in terms of use of the page, um, Becky and my team has provided me with the info and Google Analytics tell us that the directory since the 1st of November, which is when we launched it, um, went live is 1360 visits um so that's that uh we also raised i'm just reading my notes here we've um told it's all very well having a warm space directory if you don't tell anybody about it so we have raised awareness in a loads of ways lots of different newsletters community safety and safeguarding interagency bulletin public health newsletter lots of social media other magazines carer center uh, the BSWICB, Library, St John's Foundation and 3SG, of course. So I think that's probably all I want to say about it. The only thing I'm going to, I think Alison's going to be speaking next about the Community Contribution Fund. So once we've got details on that, we can add them because I don't think it's become been available until now. So I'll hand over to Alison. I will stop sharing. I think that's probably all I want to say about it. Um, but yeah, it's all going well uh, and it's really, you know, good 
addition to the sort of cost of living information that we offer to to residents. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. That's great. Um, my name is Alison Wells. I work for the Council's community engagement team. And one of the things we look after is the Community Contribution Fund, which was started in 2021 as a, as a bit of a pilot. It allows residents to make voluntary contributions, um, which go out in the form of grants annually to voluntary and community not for profit organisations. So a bit of a gamble. I'm delighted to tell you that to date, it's raised nearly £40,000 in contributions wow. from residents. Um, we distributed a fair amount of that. The first year was very, it was very much around reducing inequality. And the first year we, we had such a great response. We had 25,000 to, to give away. So there were larger grants of £2,000 to a variety of organisations doing fabulous work across the, the area. Last year we had a bit less money, but we had a lot of warm spaces. So it was agreed that the funding would go in small grants of £250 to support those warm spaces, which again was a brand new initiative. People didn't know what to expect. I think this year, you know, organisations have realised what works well for them, um, which were the most busy and popular and that. So that's settling down. So this time we've got eight and a half thousand available at the moment to give away. Obviously, people can keep donating so that total can keep going up and we're going to do some promotion around that as well. Um, we're aiming to launch next week with grants of 500 pounds which will be available to the warm spaces, but also we want to go back to that initial reducing in inequality purpose of the fund. And, um, you know, the looking at Sarah's the introduction and those stats that you read out, it's quite shocking around that food poverty again. So we're going to we're going to get that message out there that one of the things we want to support are food related projects and anything, any organisations that are supporting the cost of living crisis. And, and the other thing that I do is um, look after the funding journal and which if you don't know, I'll pop a link into that because when we put out the interagency bulletin, and I know a lot of you get that, we just include a little snapshot of the funding available, whereas the journal's a, a comprehensive list and it includes grants for individuals. But yes, core costs is something that is, is rarely available to the voluntary and community sector and it is frustrating and we know that. So yeah, in, in short, we're working on it. Hope to launch next week. There'll be a nice long deadline. I know it's not ideal time to launch just before Christmas, but we'll be keeping that fund open until at least mid-February, maybe a bit longer. And uh, yeah, hope that's helpful for you. And we'll get uh, some press releases and promotion about it out there as soon as we can. Thank you. Uh, Alison, thank you ever so much for that. That's really helpful. I don't think I'd heard the 40,000 number, Madden, I'm just saying that's, that is yeah. quite, really quite amazing. Um, so yeah, thank you for, for sharing that with us. Um, I was just gonna, uh, before I hand over back to Becky, I was just gonna ask Mandy um, just, again given colleagues are on the call and that Mandy's here to just talk a little bit through the kind of winter preparedness that we we kind of have in places for the council but also for you as our communities. Thank you Chair. Yeah I thought it would be helpful for people just to understand sort of the almost the business as usual um, winter resilience that we do put in place. So the council operates throughout the year a 24-7 cover arrangements to deal with any particular incident or emergencies and obviously to support communities as well. So we've always got a director on call and emergency planning staff on call. In addition to that, uh, if we have to deal with uh, vulnerable children or adults, we've also got 24-7 arrangements in place as well. And if any of you do get any concerns out of ours, those are on our, our website as well. So we have, I'm sure you can understand with our range of partners, we've got some really quite detailed planning uh, in place as well. And most recently, we've started to take some of that planning out to our communities. And we did have a community resilience day in the autumn, which very much focused around flooding. And we work very closely, for example, with communities in Chew Magna, um, to, who regularly uh, experience uh, risk of flooding in their locality, but also to spread the mes message across the area as well. So working with the Environment Agency, we've done a lot of work over the last few months 
on some of that physical activities, um, as well as working through people like town and parishes um, and communities around grit bins and a whole range of activity that goes in place. So that's sort of our place based activity. Um, when the Christmas market is on, because it does bring in so many visitors as well, we do actually have a, a dual call out system that operates. So we've also got a separate set of offices on call in case there are any incidents relating to that. Um, and as many of you know, we've got very close, um, very good working relationships with health colleagues. So over the last couple of months, and I'm conscious there are GP surgeries online as well, we've worked very much across health and social care sector to do our annual planning. Um, and by that, I also include public health. So there has been a lot of work going on through our local integrated care alliance, which Kate Morton, who's obviously heavily involved in our local voluntary sector, is the deputy chair of that meeting um, as well. So Kate is heavily involved in that in working with us and working through um, the community engagement team in the hub. In addition to that, our public health team have got two types of activity. They've got their acute responses as well to communicable disease, but they do undertake winter wellness campaigns as well. And there's some proactive work going out with communities, particularly those more vulnerable communities um, in advance of the winter. So there's been a huge amount of work going on in the background, including from the public health side, things like promoting vaccinations, for example. So that work goes on usually sort of from about July onwards to about September October time in the council um, and it's fairly um, fairly well organised now but what we do as well is we have up to that this year and there's been some additional activity that has gone on as I said working through some of our communities to make sure we're sort of supporting them through the winter period. Thank you Cherry. Thank you Mandy. Becky can I hand back to you for our group discussion? Thank you. Yes you can thanks Cherry. Um, Yes, I think we wanted to basically open up the floor to those of you that are joining the call, because I think we'd really like to hear from you about some of the pressures or some of the patterns that you're noticing and also some of the challenges or perhaps some innovative things that you might have done to try and overcome some of the cost of living um, pressures at the moment. So we just really wanted to open the floor up to you. So hopefully we've got some willing, willing people to enter into a bit of conversation. So I don't know if we wanted to sort of go around the room, maybe. We'll have to have someone brave to go first. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. Mandy. Is that all right? Would it be helpful if I just gave you an idea of what we're seeing in some of our sort of frontline services? Because obviously it is directly related helpful. to cost of living. So, for example, in children's services, we are definitely seeing more requests um uh for to obviously uh coming through to our services and the complexity and the pressure that families are under at the moment that is definitely manifesting itself in um you know seeing uh, more families in need definitely and more young people in need so i thought it may be helpful just to start the conversation to see we're beginning to see some of that activity coming through as well as things like our homelessness um, numbers and obviously the people we're having to uh, rehouse on temporary accommodation as well so there's a whole plethora of some of the pressures around that we're seeing in some of those frontline services now which are directly related definitely to cost of living and some of the pressure uh, the sort of pressures families in our communities are under Thank you, Mandy. Oh, that complexity definitely is a theme, isn't it? I was reading yesterday, um, I can't remember now whereabouts in the country it was, but it was one of the citizens advice um, bureaus that were saying that the cases are so complex now and, and mm. that's really noticeable, um, but, uh, you know, even particularly in the last year, and it's it's costing yeah. them obviously more and more time in terms of staff. And I think a lot of our organisations that, that are members of 3SG were noticing that they're all the cases are much more complex and they take a lot of time to try and uh, try and resolve. I think Dave's probably about to come in and tell me that with the hub as well. Dave. Yeah, just um, there's a couple of um, uh, people who couldn't be here today who actually I'm meeting this week anyway, um, who, who've given me some updates. So one is um, Malcolm Morgan, who's the vicar at St Andrew's Church at, at um, Hawthorne Grove at Fox Hill, which Cherry and, and, and Mandy know, know Malcolm very well because they uh, they went up to see him a few a few weeks ago. He's still 
doing his weekly work with the local residents of Fox Hill and he's still getting 30 or 40 or more people that turn up on a Wednesday for the sort of Fox Hill meeting where there's there's free food as part of the food pantry. There's clothes available for them for 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 the winter, which are which are going down and being being taken. And also, they, what they do is they fund uh, a a meal for people on a Wednesday lunchtime. So they are getting now forty or more. And as Malcolm said to Cherry and Mandy, and if you ever if you get the chance to go there, please do go because as Malcolm says, they are some of our most deprived residents in the in in the whole of Bath and North East Somerset um and it's it's really difficult and the church up there is doing tremendous work the other the other put and I'm seeing Malcolm ag again tomorrow because we've been able to give him some money for his youth provision work the other person who couldn't make it is Alison Todd from Mercy in Action uh, and I'm seeing Alison on Friday down at the Action Pantry at Twerton and she will tell you that this year is even worse than last year and last year she told us that she'd never seen anything quite like it apart from when she started 20 years ago in the Philippines when the whole charity started so Alison at the moment is dealing with uh, 200 families in Twerton and the other food pantry which is at Radstock with the Radstock Town Council so they're looking after five six hundred people and currently their their quarterly bill for buying um from the wholesaler just basic staples like pasta tins of soup and stuff they're spending four thousand pound a quarter at the moment just on basics to top up the actual food parcels for the families who pay three or four pound every time they can because literally the stuff the stuff isn't coming back in from the supermarkets in the way it was 12 months or two years ago because actually everybody is suffering because the cost of everything is going up for everybody so i just wanted to just raise those two because they couldn't make it today and so i said i'd say on their behalf i think we've actually got um thanks dave i think we've got jazz moyers from um mercy in action on the call but i don't uh -huh. know if you're there jazz are you there yeah, you're on the spot me? is there anything <laughs> we can no, hear you dave, that's so amazing. Thank you. you've definitely kind of covered the majority of that um we are seeing so many people coming through our doors recently uh, the need is just growing and referrals are really reflecting that. Um, like Dave said, we're spending thousands and thousands a year on topping up those basics um, just so that because, you know, we'll get surplus from fair share and we pay them annually. I think it's about £13,000 annually um, and we're getting that each each week from them and we get an amazing amount of stuff there. But we do need to keep topping it up. Um, for example, we've just... We've just placed our Christmas orders, which is for just 230 households. So that's a mix of families and singles. But that already, and we've only placed about half of it, is looking to be maybe six, seven thousand. And that's just to kind of treat them over Christmas. And that's just one one week. So huge, huge amounts of food is going out on our end. Um, which we're really obviously happy and thankful that we can do. We've got some amazing people supporting us, um, but it's not without the struggle. Uh, it's difficult to source stuff and it's costing us a lot, which, you know, that's why we have shops. We make that money to buy this stuff, but even, even that's quite challenging um, and becoming more and more so. Um, but we're getting through, we're coming up with lots of creative, um, creative solutions. We spent this morning walking around our business park where our office is, and going to all of our neighbours and they've all been collecting baskets of food over the last few weeks and we have filled up to like huge uh amy will pop some bits on social media so i'm sure you'll potentially some of you'll see it at some point but we've gathered we had to bring the car back three times because it was full so yeah really really happy so we're getting there <laughs> but thank you thanks dave for everything thanks. covered that was lovely <laughs> thanks yeah. jazz for apology, that apology that jasmine funny. i didn't see you there <laughs> no worries <laughs> No, it's really helpful. Thank you. Um, and then I think I had a hand up from Emma. I hope her surgery. Hi, I just I had a question. I hope you can hear me. Um, so from the Mercy Action point of view, what kind of things do you need? Do you need clothes and food? And if we wanted to organise a donation, how would we organise doing that? So if we did a collection as a surgery or as a group of surgeries, because I'm obviously here representing the Three Valleys PCN as well, how could we 
how do we get that to you what do we do because that's possibly something we could do do you need food and clothes or just food we're quite inundated with clothes. Uh, we get so many donations coming through from our shops and okay. we offer those out to our clients through our clothes line at the pantries. So we're good mm. for clothes, but food, we can always take extra food. We, you know, anything that you can give would be amazing. Um, I can, I will get your contact details probably from Becky and I'll send yeah. you an email and potentially we can set something up hopefully yeah. before Christmas. But um, yeah. But definitely that would be incredible. Anything, anything that anyone, anyone can give um, okay. is really, really great for us around Christmas. And, you know, into the new year, we're going to, you know, the need's going to be there. It's going to be the same. Um, yeah. We're going to okay. need that through to next year as well. Um, yeah. So I'll get your details from Becky and I'll, I'll get in touch. Lovely. I, ha- I also had, I have several questions. Sorry, I've not, I normally have got, got a lot of questions, so I do apologise. Um, so the other thing is, obviously, we're seeing, um, as social prescribers, we are seeing quite a few homeless people come our way. Um, mm-hmm. I've got a couple of guys that are living in cars at the moment. Um, and so actually, mm-hmm. it's very difficult for them to heat food um, mm-hmm. or cook anything. Um, so are there, um, it would be really useful for for me to know the places where these people could go and maybe get a hot meal for free potentially I'm not really sure uh, but local to Radstock so not necessarily in Bath because mm-hmm. I don't know that they could get to Bath yeah. um, that's the issue because they might be living in a car but they not might not necessarily be able to um, put fuel in it or it might not actually be insured or have tax or anything um so that's one thing so it'd be really great I've recently sent um a printer out and, and gave somebody the list of the warm spaces so that he could go and get warm um but yeah food options are, are gratefully received if there's somewhere we could look for those so it's really great to have those links to those websites because obviously we could have a look at those and then and also where families where there are young children I know that the hive in Peasdown last year trialed this heat and eat for like a pound um, and I don't know whether there were any other schemes that you know of that are going to happen and um, I was thinking particularly about your grants Alison that that would you know potentially be something that, that could be used I know um, but you know whether that's something that you know if that's happening anywhere locally but I'm meaning kind of in the Radstock, Midsummer Norton, Westfield, Peasdown area because we, we know that our fa- a big barrier for our families is they won't travel to Bath. So. Uh, I'll have a look. I'll have a look, Emma, and, and see the heat and eat at the high mm. didn't work that well. They were really disappointed. No, I know. Yeah. But what did work really well, and it worked when we were helping out with the COVID crisis, was they they turned it round into microwavable meals that people could yeah. just pick up, no questions asked, and that yeah. went down much better. I think they thought people would want to sit and eat yeah. communally, and they didn't. Yeah. They wanted That's to just take the stuff away. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't anything if anybody knows if there are any similar schemes that we could be recommending to some of our families, um, you know, anything or anything like that that you know of. I mean, it's really useful for us to know about it. Or if you can sign posters to the places where we can find out about it, um, that would be really useful. Um, I've got two hands up. I've got Dave and Claire. Are you both with answers to those questions potentially? I'm not sure who was first. Yeah, Emma, just the, on just two points. The, the, the Mercy and Action, I think what Jasmine will agree with me, that they're working with uh, Radstock Town Council, literally just around the corner from you. So any any support that you wanted to give on, on your doorstep is probably going worth going to speak to George Clutton, the clerk at Radstock Town Council, and she can link you into that system. And then just the other thing I just wanted to say about the, 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 the two people that you mentioned who are living in cars at the moment, we have had that in the past over the last three or four years where there's been situations like that. And I'm just wondering whether or not they would be willing for you to forward their details into the community wellbeing hub, because we've got links to DHI and CAB and some of those organisations which may be, hopefully, may be able to do something about supporting them into some sort of accommodation. Yeah, so one of the, so one of them already is linked with the DHI. He's on a, a tramadol recovery program, which he's doing really really well. Um, he's reluctant to engage with because he's he's worked really hard at kicking some quite serious habits. 
um, he is reluctant to engage with some of the other homeless services that are around because he doesn't want to be exposed to that. He doesn't want to risk being exposed to that kind of risky behaviour because he feels he's doing so well, um, um, which, you know, all testament to him. So he's, you know, that's one of the reasons why he's choosing to live in a car and not go to a homeless um kind of shelter at the moment uh, because he feels that for him personally that's the best option to stay well so thank you and claire did you want to come in um yeah i just wanted to say that um here at hillcrest we'd be happy to set up a little you know food bank um point where people can bring food so I will just double check with the partners but I'm sure that we'd be definitely happy to join in with that so please pass on our details so we can start yeah, setting up a collection here okay yeah. and Jazz hello thank you that's really kind Claire um just to go back to Emma we do have the we do have the um action pantry in Bradstock so we can take referrals to there. Um, we run from the library on a Friday. Um, so I can I can pop those details over to you when when I get in touch about about some other bits. Um, but we can definitely take referrals to there. We most of our food is to be cooked, but we can work around that and we can give them what they need, definitely, and find some other alternatives that they can that they can make use of at Radstock. So uh, just on that, jumping on that again, sorry, I feel like I'm capitalising a bit, sorry. Um, do we know if there is anywhere locally in Radstock or Midsummer Norton that's providing hot food for free or a minimal cost? Because I know that the church did, the Methodist church did last year when they were still functioning as a church. Um, but I don't know whether there is anywhere currently. Not sure about this year. It might be worth speaking to Midsummer Norton Community Trust demo as well to see if they're, um, is they, they might know. Um, that's Alex Davis. I can put you in touch with him if you need me to. Yes, please. Okay, will do. Um, Thank you. Can I can I just respond to that? Because that um, Midsummer Not Methodist Church does runs a weekly lunch club. I think it's on a Tuesday. I've put some details in the chat. There is a cost to that, but um, but there's some details on their website, so do have a look at that. But that they've been running that for for a number of years now, and they also do um, coffee as well. I think on a Friday. So um, so there's some details in the chat about the Midsummer Not Methodist Church. Sarah, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. If people can travel, I know as well that Oasis Church are doing hot meals quite regularly, I think, throughout the week, but they are in Bath. Um, so, yeah, that is, it is an issue if people can't travel, isn't it? It's sort of interesting well, last year with the warm spaces, interesting, but also a bit tragic as well, in that it seemed to be the big findings from warm spaces were that people were actually weren't going to get warm, particularly they, they were going for food and they were going because they were lonely. So um, I think that's sort of some larger questions as well. Um, is there anybody else that would like to add anything in terms of sort of going around the room? Yes, that's right, Anna. Um, yeah, George. George would probably know as well. Do you have George's contact details, Emma? George Clutton, town clerk at Radstock Town Council? I'm I'm not sure. I definitely know George and I've definitely spoken to her on calls, but whether I've got her email, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank Sarah. you. <laughs> Amazing. See, this is brilliant. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, and Mel, would you like to come back in? Yeah, just a quickie. So I think in view of what was just being said, perhaps it might be worth rebranding it not as warm spaces, but uh, as something else, because I guess, I mean, it's never it's never been just a warm space. It's been a lot more than that. But I think that I was um, surprised, actually, that uh, we have half the amount of warm spaces this year than last and perhaps that's something to do with it I don't know um, so yeah it was just just I agree I think it might be worth looking at what we what we call the initiative Oops. yeah thanks Mel Dave yeah sorry just a couple of other things that just um, re reminded me and I don't know Sara you may know a bit more about the detail but obviously we've got the 100 warm spaces packs 
that came into the community wellbeing hub that Denise Perrin is involved in. Oh, there's one there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> courtesy of um, West Utilities or somebody, wasn't it? And then the other thing is, I know Tracy Pike from Youth Connect South West got given some money to do some work around supporting people around claiming additional funding for winter fuel payments. And it's just a question about how we try and link all of those things together. So if Tracy's got money to provide advice, she obviously needs to go to the people at a location where they can give that advice to those people. And then we can probably try and do something with the warm packs. And I'd, Sarah, I'm not sure what Denise has got planned for the warm pack. Yeah, so the warm packs are shared. So here's one I prepared earlier. So um, these arrived the other day. Um, they're a warm pack. Um, Centre for Sustainable Energy um, have um, uh, received the donation. There's some details in in the chat about it. So there's they they've got information um, about saving energy, keeping warm. So they've got um, hats, they've got gloves, they've got blankets, um, they've got flasks. Um, and uh, what we've agreed to do is if you um, have identified someone that, that you think might benefit from a pack, um, make a referral into the Community Wellbeing Hub via the village agents and they will go <clears throat> and follow up the referral. And then they can also connect people to the Centre for Sustainable Energy to do sort of a, a, an assessment at home, but also look at other support as well that might be available. Um, and we're looking at how we can connect up with um, um, Tracy Pike in um, Youth Connect Southwest. So we're trying to to make those connections. So yeah, do do put the referral through the Community Wellbeing Hub, and we can make the connections from here. Great, thank you, Sarah. And Anna, would you like to come in? Hi, yeah, sorry for being late. I just uh, overheard the last bits of sharing some information that we are using. There's a um, national energy action. They hand out fuel bank vouchers worth £147. CSE, so the Centre for Sustainable Energy, use them as well. All you need to do is refer a client over the phone with them, and then they will get a one-hour phone call from them to talk them through about how they can save energy, and then they should usually get the voucher. They can also send packs with like warm blankets, energy-saving bulbs, that kind of stuff. Um, also, we're hoping that we might be able to offer a drop-in very soon in Radstock and Midsummer and Norton. We've put in a funding application weeks and weeks ago, um, and I, I haven't heard back. I'm really sorry, but we're very, very much hoping that we're going to be down there very soon. That's amazing news, Anna. <laughs> OK, uh, do we have any more? Otherwise, I'll hand back to Cherry. Is there anybody else with any other thoughts? Is that a legacy hand, Anna, or are you going again? <laughs> Don't worry. OK. Well, hopefully that was really useful for everybody. I'm going to hand back to Cherry to, to close. Hi. Thanks, Becky. I don't know really that there's much more for me to say other than I, I'm always just blown away by the the energy and the the ideas and the willingness of people to kind of share and and learn from each other in what, 20, 25 minutes? 14 people have managed to generate kind of all of that knowledge and sharing and information and support for, for one another and ultimately to support our communities, which is obviously what we're all here to, to do. So all I want to just say is thank you ever so much to everybody for coming and for taking part and for sharing your knowledge, your ideas, the, the resources that you have, because we're much stronger if we all kind of work together. So just thank you, um, as always, kind of just, yeah, just blown away by that. Um, so what what a nice way to spend a, a Wednesday lunchtime. So thank you. Um, and I wish you all a very nice, hopefully not too wet and damp and soggy afternoon. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. See you soon. <laughs>